Hello and welcome on in to a special edition of the KSL Sports Front Page. It's powered by KSLSports.com. I'm your host and Utah Insider Trevor Allen. Just fresh off of the breaking news that Utah basketball has parted ways with head coach Larry Kruskoviak. Yeah, that's right. After 10 years at the helm, Larry Kruskoviak is no longer the head coach of the running Utes. And we'll, so we're going to break that all down of what's happened over the last 10 years and you know, some names to throw out there, but I would like to get your guys' thoughts. Are you guys okay with this move? And if so, give me some names of, of who you think Utah should uh, go after. Um, we'll we'll talk about the uh, statement that Utah AD Mark Harlan made just a short time ago about the uh, direction he is in and, and, and what's next for Utah basketball. And so uh, a lot to get to. So make sure you guys drop your guys' comments here, and I will get to them. And as they're flooding in, I'll go ahead and uh, just point point blank here, read the uh, statement that, that, that Mark Harwood made on uh, just a, a short while ago. He said, quote, Today I informed head, head men's basketball coach Larry Kruskoviak that I am making a change in the leadership of our men's basketball program. The decision comes after a thorough evaluation of the program, both on and off the court, as I do with every head coach at the conclusion of their seasons. Ultimately, our program needs a new voice, a new vision, and a new leader who can build upon Larry's foundation and lead us to greater heights in the years ahead. Larry has always been dedicated to our student athletes, to our university, and to the Salt Lake City community, and I am grateful for his decade of service to the University of Utah. In addition, he and his wife, Jan, have, have been incredibly generous in supporting you and in, in, including supporting university and community initiatives i want to wish larry jan and their family the very best the costs associated with this termination and the hiring of a new head coach and staff will be fully funded from athletically generated resources we will launch an immediate national search for a new head coach close quote now here's my my just initial thoughts as as a beat writer as someone who covers a program closely, you never wish for someone to lose their job. You don't. I've gotten to know Larry for the last 10 years that I've been covering Utah athletics from two previous or from, from this job that I have now and a job that I had before. And I'll tell you, Larry has always been kind to me. He's always taken the time out of his day. There, there were times where I would go up to his office just before the season and I, I would sit down and I'd, I'd go through his roster and, you know, you know, just get, get some little nuggets about his players. And he was always willing to take the time out of his busy day to get that done. And, you know, he's always been nice to me, you know, even joking around a time or two on media availabilities and things like that. So I wish Larry Kraskoviak nothing but the absolute best. He is, he is a great coach. I just feel like Utah needed a new direction to go in because right now the basketball team does not have that energy right there. They don't have that spark. They don't have that, that support behind them of what they've had back when, you know, Rick was here and, and things like that. And I, I know that it's going to be hard to, to find a coach like Rick Majerus who could take them all the way to the, to the uh, national championship game, because guess what? The last time a West coast college basketball team has won an NCAA championship was 1997 when the Arizona Wildcats did it. And I know Utah came pretty dang close a couple of years later. Now, just, I and I, I know that a lot of people are saying, well, Larry, you know, has had a lot of guys transfer throughout the years. And I, I will address that because I was going to write up a special opinion piece about it. But since Larry's no longer there, it, there's really no, no point to have it done. And, you know, I, I feel like that a lot of the transfers from Utah's program haven't really gone on to do anything at their new schools. Um, I mean, there there is data to show it. I don't have it here in front of me. And that's why I was doing some of the research. But just on paper, you look at it. Um, but it's still not a good look for, you know, your, your program when you're one of the leading schools, not only in the conference, but in the country and players leaving the program. Um but now what does this do for Utah basketball moving forward? Does Timmy Allen decide to leave? Um, Ryland Jones. I know that Ryland's, Ryland's dad is on the coaching staff. And I think a big reason why Ryland picked Utah. And could he be leaving now? 
Um, you've got Plummer. You've got Ian Martinez. Um, you've got to look at some of these guys and and look at what potentially could happen if there's you know a change because nowadays players like to play for certain coaches. It's not about you know just style of play and also the university and things like that. A lot of it is coaches. And Larry's done a tremendous job being able to recruit. It's just trying to take them to the next level. I know he did that with DeLon, with uh, Jakob Pertl, and I don't, I don't even want to say Kyle Kuzma because, to be honest with you, Kyle Kuzma took off after he he decided to go to the NBA draft. And in that in that offseason leading up to um, leading up to the combine, leading up to the, the uh, draft, Kyle Kuzma stepped his game up tremendously and is now a role player for a, a NBA champion organization. Um, so it's not that, you know, Larry, you know, I, I didn't want him to be fired. I never ask for someone to be fired unless it's for, you know, obviously criminal reasons and things like that. But I think Larry has done everything he could for this program and a change was needed to get a fresh face, new energy and to try and spark that, that fire behind the fan support. For Utah basketball because it's turned into a football school. And when when you're having to close off the upper bowl, and I know we're in the middle of a you know pandemic and we're almost done with it and all that, but when when we do get back to normal, they already have the upper bowl closed off in the Huntsman Center. And when you're having to close that off, you know you're having problems within your program. So now some big names to throw out here. A couple of them. Stand out to me right away. And one comes in on Twitter saying, Alex Jensen, while that's obviously the first person you should probably call, I don't think Alex Jensen's going to be the head coach of Utah basketball because I think Alex Jensen knows he's in line for a head coaching job in the NBA. He, ha- he has been thrown around and has interviewed with other teams throughout the last two years for head coaching vacancies. He just hasn't landed that one job yet, but he is a coach on the rise who I feel like will probably get a head coaching job in the NBA probably within the next two to three years. So I, and he's also got a pretty good gig for the Utah jazz. Um, He's definitely a name to throw out there. And I know others will uh, probably throw out Johnny Bryant. Um, Johnny Bryant is the right hand man for the New York Knicks who are doing a really good job as well. And uh, a comment says that that Larry was a, a, a head coach in the NBA. I understand that, but you also see that you're getting a ton of interviews for head coaching vacancies in the NBA, and you're going to go take a college job. I, I know I want it. I'm just saying. It, it, and trust me, I'm I'm sure that Mark Harlan is going to make that 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 call to Alex Jensen. And if Alex Jensen doesn't take it, I bet that that's the reason why. Now, other ones to throw out there, Craig Smith, the head coach up at Utah State. He has done a tremendous job turning around the Utah State program to where they are they are constantly battling for Mountain West titles, especially over the last three years. And I, I just feel like that Craig Smith would, would be a great fit. I know another one would be Mark Pope. B, BYU is not in, in a great place. Um, they, they were kind of trending downward when, when Dave Rose decided to, to call it a career. And Mark Pope has done a phenomenal job with that BYU program. Obviously, they are in Indianapolis right now um, getting ready for the NCAA tournament. Um, and then, you know, just some other names thrown out there I know that have, have actually been uh, on that. Just kind of in, I'm actually going to put up a big board over at kslsports.com for you guys to look at. But so I'm just throwing out a couple of names here. Um, you've got Leon Rice, who is over at, at a Boise State. He's actually done a great job there as well. Boise was on the bubble of getting into the NCAA tournament. You've also got Randy Bennett over at St. Saint, Saint Mary's. He's, he's done a tremendous job as well for the Gales. And I, I think that that would be a, a step up for him because, you know, the Gales – while they're they're in a good conference, they're not in a in a power five in, in, in one of those major conferences. So it'll definitely be interesting to see. But I would say you first start within you definitely make the call to Alex Jensen. I'm not saying don't call him. 
you still do because you never know where he's at um, on wanting to take the job. So I would say call Alex Smith or uh, Alex Jensen, Alex Smith. That would actually be crazy if that happened. Um, and then Craig Smith, I think, is another one to call and Mark Pope. Those are the ones you end up starting out with first. And then you've got a bunch of these other national ones who could come in. Maybe you need some someone with, you know, national some some national flavor because as you look at it and I I do not want to to minimize this the the basketball town in Utah isn't what California, Arizona, um you know, some of these other states are right now. Still have talented players but to have that pipeline within the state is not as crucial because you could also use the Pac-12 as leverage and also the state-of-the-art practice facility, which is absolutely tremendous. So I, I would just say it probably wouldn't hurt to go national to, to find you know a, a coach who um, maybe an a, assistant coach who's on the rise. Uh, for you know a power five program i know i i've seen other with other vacancies because college basketball has had a lot of coaching firings over the last 24 hours and i know that there's a baylor assistant coach who i, I think um ha has had his name floated around i think fran fraschilla from espn floated that name out there um so yeah those are those are some names i would throw out there right now now one last thing uh, I know that there were talks about Larry's buyout, how big it was, and with how much he, he had left on his contract. Obviously, you, the Utes are going to be paying for that, and it's all athletically generated resources, according to Mark Harlan. And then you've got um, some rumors out there that Larry resigned. I mean, Larry could have. But according to this statement that I'm reading from Mark Harlan, the guy who made the change, sounded like Larry was terminated. Um, if there was something about him being, you know, stepping down or them parting ways, that would have been included in that statement. Just put, just putting that out there. Tune in to KSLSports.com. Uh, download the KSL Sports app. It's powered by University Federal Credit Union for all of the latest on the Utes. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Get all the latest over at KSLSports.com.